In this video, I'm going to show you how I begin a painting, and starting with the charcoal sketch. I'm working on a toned canvas, which I had toned a couple of days earlier, so that that tone is dry. Uh, it's not too dark, I just like to, sometimes I like to kill the white of the canvas. So I'm working here with vine charcoal, and uh, just outside the picture frame, I have a reference photo that I'm working from. And of course, I've sped this up for the sake of the video, so it's not too long. I actually spent probably a little better than an hour working on this drawing. You know, I, I'm kind of moving slow and really thinking about placement and proportion, you know, of the big shapes the river, the trees, the wall in the background, and how they all relate to each other in terms of where they're placed on the canvas and their proportion uh, in relationship to each other. Here you can see me establishing the top edge of the wall, and I am separating um, light and shadow, basically. Not too detailed, just, uh, just the big basic shapes so that I know how to begin my block in with paint. And uh, you'll see later that I will redraw and redefine some of those shapes. So here I'm blocking in the back wall. Uh, I began with the bushes in the foreground, which I forgot to record, but you can see that that's established and that gives me my darkest dark and that helps me determine the value for the background wall. And that's what I'm blocking in now. And then some of the lit plane. Um, it's not too much surface area, so I just decided to go ahead and fill that in here early on. And that way I can just sort of move forward in the painting. Here I've established a little tree line that sort of cuts across that wall. And now I'm putting in some of the reflected lights. And, you know, when you're doing this kind of thing, especially if you're working in oils or acrylics and, and you've got the, um, you know, you're able to work wet into wet, you're using acrylics that stay wet. Uh, it's really fun working wet into wet and it really gives you an opportunity to develop your own shorthand in the paint. You know, you get a lot of little subtle blending opportunities and mark making that that is very changeable and uh, I like that about oils. So as I'm kind of finishing up this wall and, and I take it to about where I think it's about 90 percent. I don't know how much detail I need until I finish some of the other areas of the painting. And uh, now here I'm going to start working on the trees in the foreground here, and I'm these red trees, uh, that was really the contrast between those red trees and that background wall was a big part of what drew me to this scene. So I really wanted to make sure they stand out. And they might be a little oversaturated at this point, but it's okay because it's very easy to go back in and tone them down later, especially while the paint's still wet. You can do, some, again, that subtle wet into wet blending and just get some nice subtle effects. But basically, you know, I'm putting some color against non-color and kind of sandwiching those trees in between the background wall and the foreground bushes and uh, now establishing a little bit of the rocky shoreline there. Moving over to the right, I'm working on these pine trees now and we have a lot of repetitive shapes here with these trees. They're all kind of the same size and very similar in shape. And so in order to add some variety, I, I chose to really vary the colors a little bit. Uh, not, not too, too much, but enough that they stand out and have a little individual personality. And now I'm about to start on the water and my idea with the water was to start with the bottom, uh, you know, it's fairly transparent, fairly shallow here. 
show the bottom and then just a few blue reflections on top. For comparison, here's my reference photo on the left and the finished painting against the wall. Visit CodyDeLong.com for more information.